Hello guys, in this part of video I will be completing my uh, PCB board and soldering all the pieces together. Um, so I place all components on, on, top, of, uh, on, top, of, on top of my uh, PCB board just to see if everything fits. And then the next step is to make the air pipe uh, for... Um, well, this air pipe will be connecting the solenoids and, uh, and the pump so I can create the vacuum and the pressure in, in the system. Uh, well, this is just 4 millimeter uh, copper pipe uh, purchased in a hardware store. And, uh, well, I've, cho I've chosen it because it's easy to, to put together and it's easy to solder to PCB. On, on this pipe, I've just, I'm, I'm just not cutting 45 degrees uh, angle so I can connect uh, two pipes in right angle just like so. And I'm satisfied with the cut, I just connect it with the helping hands, put some solder flux and apply some 1.5 mm uh, soldering wire. And the next step is punch a hole in this uh, for second solenoid, so I'm marking it, I'm marking the place of a second solenoid and then just I just file it so I'm I won't break uh, the drill bit and I'm drilling with two first with a smaller uh, drill bit and then with a bigger one and then I'll just roughly file it down. Here again I'm applying solder flux and I'm weighing down with a file so I can you know, I can solder it easily. I don't need bother cleaning my solder flux for clean clean the rest. Uh, okay so I'm so I'm soldering this with a you know with a good amount because air will flow through this. I need to I need this to be airtight. Now I'm marking the these two parts and I'll use these just for rigidity and support. So I I won't I won't be soldering these perfectly. They just need to fit and connect these uh, these top pipes uh, these uh, this top pipe uh, together. Okay, I soldered it down. Now I'm testing it on a board, and it seems uh, it seems like a perfect fit. So the next thing I need to do, I, I need to check the height of the solenoids above uh, the PCB board. So I will just plug them in as it is, and then I will mark my uh, I'll mark my air pipe uh, so I can cut off the excess. So on the bottom part, I need to cut a lot, a lot more. So uh, yeah, I just need a few millimeters to, to stick out. And again, here I use my hacksaw to to cut off all four parts of pipe. And it's this is you know pretty small, and it's hard to cut it off with a hacksaw. You need to grip it tightly, and it's yeah, well, it's hard. You need to sew just in one direction. So. I just deburr it and then I can continue with soldering. And in first, I will solder these parts that are not sticking uh, away from the board, like big capacitors or stuff. So, first thing that I'll do on any board, I will solder down the diodes and resistors and stuff like that. I use several different diodes here SMD diodes, these are Schottky diodes. Uh, this is the stuff I have at home. I uh, apply a lot of solder flux because this board is dirty I was handling it and I, I cannot use uh, uh, you know solvent now to to clean it off so I use just a lot of uh, solar flux again I have these two diodes these two are um, solenoid dri driver diodes it's again the same type of Schottky diode more or less it's big beefy one it's uh, overkill but that's what I have here um, Okay, I solder these these three diodes over here, and then the next the, the next part part is um, aluminum capacitor. So first I solder one side, and this is tricky. It's you know it's hard to get it perfectly into a position, and uh, I just solder one side, then I apply a lot of solder on the other side in order to you know soak it soak it beneath the uh, electrolytic capacitor and then the second one I notice well I put these two 
very close to each other. They, they are touching grounds and uh, the more I work on this board I, I noticed more and more mistakes I made and uh, at the end uh, finally I decided to make a new board. You will see that uh, at the end of this video. I tried to uh, to do it with um, I tried to solder uh, these components um, with the hot air gun and the solder paste but I was lifting the solder resist layer this this blue blue paint off the board and so I at this point I've already started working on another board uh, I've changed some some things that I noticed some errors and it, at this point it was already already etching you will see that and and uh, other part of the video. So here I'm soldering the small components, this uh, 4148 uh, diode, uh, capacitor and resistor and here I'm soldering down the 555 chip that I use as a timer on this on this board. So I, at first I solder one, one pin just to take it down in place and once that's in place I will solder usually the opposite side. Sorry for focusing here and then I go back to to, to the first side and I, I, I solder back all, all legs, so all pins, so that's okay. And here I have some more resistors, um, well this, these, these actually are jumper wires. So all resistors on board are 1206 and I don't have uh, zero resistance 1206 resistors so I'll be using uh, these uh, just basically jumper wires are cut, I cut off the excess and the problem with the jumper wires while soldering the other side, the side that's not soldered it it gets hot pretty fast and then you desolder the first side, the, the side that's already soldered so sometimes you just need to pin it down like this and apply your heat, yeah you can see you know all wire is moving and then I have this SOT component. Uh, this is, uh, I think, NPN transistor, and uh, it's, this is very tricky. And because I was developing this solder resist layer, well, the sun was not perpendicular to the board. These smaller components were a bit off, so you can you, you can see I was scraping. Uh, I was scraping solder resist off of board, and you know. At this point, pretty much my other board was completed, but I wanted to solder this down uh, quickly and just test the rest of the board. You can see this um, uh, LM317 uh, already soldered to the board, and well, my board is more or less completed on the bottom part, so I just need these few jumpers and, and connectors that I need to test the board. So, yeah. This is just a piece of wire. I apply a lot of solder flux again, and then I I apply my heat. I use uh, multi-core 0.5 millimeters uh, solder wire, and for smaller components, and I use one and one point and half millimeter for bigger components. So these two are connectors for power and for switch. These two are 220 volts. So you can see there's no copper around it, uh, and they did not fit perfectly. So I need I needed to just press them with my finger, and you need to do this gently. You don't uh, well if you press it before you heat up the solder, you lift off the pad. Okay, so I'm soldering the other side sides of uh, my switches, and then. I soldered these wires just like needles sticking out of the board on the top side in order to, to fit my uh, switch power supply. This will convert 220 degrees to six, uh, 220 volts to 6 volts and I just purchased it off eBay. I, I made my own uh, PCB footprint just, just for it and notice I'm using one corner of this board uh, together with the mounting, mounting screw. Okay, so this is solenoid. It has eight pins, and in my previous videos, I made a mistake. This is not a uh, um, double pole, double throw. This is single pole, double throw. So these uh, these pins are connected together. And this was a mistake on this board. So I, while I was 
when I started to test this board, I noticed uh, I noticed that mistake that something was wrong. Yeah. Okay. So I'm uh, here. I'm applying solar flux and and soldering uh, soldering uh, this air pipe. And for this, you will need a lot of uh, a lot of heat and good soldering iron, strong one, so it can heat everything up. Um, usually, I put for for soldering like this, I put my uh, soldering iron like 320 Celsius or maybe even more. And of course, for for this uh, job, I'm using just uh, lead. Uh, lead solder because this lead free solder is uh, you know for this is rubbish you need you need, you need to overheat basically everything okay so this is my second boat I was telling you about and this one well was I'm satisfied pretty much I don't have my UV developing I UV exposing exposure device so I just I just use the sun again but this time I did it tomorrow the day after so it was noon time you can see I didn't I didn't need to scrape anything off so the changes on board I made uh, firstly I moved the, these three resistors because uh, well if you, if you watch my first video again you will notice that uh, these were placed uh, after the NPN transistor that's not good um, because NPN switches the well basically switches the ground I put this uh, jumper, this jumper, and of course I, I've changed the placement of these three resistors. I, I use three resistors because I don't have anything lower than 82, 82 ohms, or oh, um, 6 component back home. So I'm heating up this piece of rubber pipe, and then I'm fitting two solenoids on it. And they fit snugly, and they basically they fit perfectly. So I my plan was to, you know, to fix them to the board uh, with this zip tie. But I thought I had smaller ones. Well, this is the smallest one I have at home. So well, I will have to use this one. It's it's a little bit bigger than I expected. So I just tighten it down, and I don't expect these solenoids to be moving anymore. So I just cut it off. And I did the same on on another side. So with this part, my my board was ready for testing it. And uh, the next thing I did on this board is I just connected to my power supply at six volts, and then I I just short circuited the the foot switch. And after two and a half seconds, you can see the uh, LED light going on. That that means the circuit is working. So in next part of video, I, I will uh, completing. I will be completing this board and putting uh, everything together.